Hey guys, it's Emma here. Welcome to our live stream. We have a guest today, so I haven't actually seen this full frame because I've only set it up for half the screen because I'm talking to Chris, but I have a Christmas tree here. How exciting is that? Hello to everybody who is in the chat. Thank you to those of you who have made it at a slightly different time today. My guest is from Australia. We've made him stay awake pretty late for this live stream, and I didn't want to make him stay awake any later. So it is the fabulous Chris Frame. I've known Chris for I don't know how many years, and he I try and list the things he does, and he has a never-ending list of things. He's a historian. He lectures on cruise ships. He's a YouTuber. He's an author. He makes coloring books. He does all kinds of things. And I see we've already got some questions, so that's very exciting. Um, I think it is about time. Let's just say hello to Chris. Chris, come on the screen. Hello. Nice to see you again. It's nice to talk to you too. I don't remember when. It's been the ages. Last did a lot. It was before you had got back cruising, isn't it? Because oh it yes, was, um, taking its time to get back to cruising. It was. I know it was all about like how crazy our restrictions were and uh, it's very depressing so it's nice to be it's nice to be talking in a happy in a happy time now yeah I did feel so bad every time you know you messaged me or I messaged you and I'm off somewhere and you're like I'm still stuck here I can't leave uh, but you got out and now you're cruising again and it's so exciting yes. it's really good yeah I was on the first um Australian cruise back in May which was Amazing. super awesome um and you know like that particular trip with it sailed under the Sydney Harbour Bridge on Pacific Explorer and the whistle blew and everyone was in like, oh, you know? <laughs> it was such an amazing moment. So it was that really was in, great. In May. So you pretty yeah, well, much it was, it was, an extra year because we did the first yeah. cruise out of the UK in May. Oh my goodness. That's a long time, isn't it? Yeah. I was actually going through old conversations with a couple of other UK cruising um, friends of mine and my prediction back in 2020 had been <laughs> November 2021. So I was I was <laughs> early, you know, we, we ended up waiting till May 2022. So it was a long time. We did yeah. have, I mean, there's so many videos even on my channel where it's like, I predict in three months it's going to be this, in six months. And to be fair to us, they consistently said, you know, oh, it'll be one month, it'll be, they never said, oh, it's two years. <laughs> No, <laughs> or no, no. I don't know what we would have done, especially, I mean, I think, it's your work being told that you cannot. Yeah. Well, the same just, for you, like, right, you know, the video, I mean, obviously your channel went went crazy during the pandemic anyway, but, like, you're not to be able to go to, go to sea, not to be able to be on ships, all the friends that you've made on the cruise ships, all the mm -hmm. people that work there that you know and the yeah. hardship that they were, they were dealing with. So that particularly that first trip back, everybody who was on board from the passengers to the crew to the yeah. you know ground staff who were welcoming us everyone was just so excited and it like you could just feel the energy it was just brilliant sounds absolutely amazing yeah. i just need to say quickly thank you larry for my super chat um i don't know if there's a message but i cannot see one so if there is larry i'm very sorry and if you leave another comment I'll try i can and... see I can, well, see I, can see the, I, can, I can see the amount, not the, not another message. Oh yeah, I just feel like there should be a comment here. Oh, fair <laughs> just, enough. Yeah. <laughs> but maybe maybe Larry didn't say anything, and that's totally cool. Um, and thank you for the super chat, Larry. We're going to try and answer as many of your questions as we can in the chat. Of course, the chat does go quite fast, so if you can start your question with question in capital letters, it just makes it easier for me to kind of pick out what is a question. We have a great example already from Peter, who says a question for Chris: Do you do you see yourself more as a historian or as a writer with a specific interest in Cunard. Mm. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, I I suppose a bit of both. Um, my interest obviously started with with actually started with Titanic of all things. Um, mm -hmm. but back when I was a kid, um, read a book about Titanic and became sort of fascinated by that ship. And but not just the Titanic, but also all the other liners that were sailing on the North Atlantic at the time. So, you know, if you know the Titanic story, you know that this, uh, the rescue ship was Carpathia. It was a Cunard ship. What was Cunard all about? Started to learn about that. Um, and at um, 12 years old, I uh, went on a very oh. short cruise on the QE2. Um, yes. And QE2 I was, like yeah, I know, right? Start, <laughs> start, it was just brilliant. And mm -hmm. the ship itself was like a floating museum. Anyone who'd been on board would know. It had... Yes just this memorabilia and archive on board the ship and that's sort of where that Cunard passion started but mm -hmm. these days it's much broader than that so we've I mean obviously I'm still very well known for Cunard because of all the Cunard connections and the lectures on board the ships and that they're, they're a company that's very close to my heart but we've also done a lot of work with P&O um, mm -hmm. we've done a book about the P&O 
history, one about Orient Line, one about the evolution of the passenger ship, um, or the transatlantic liner, at least I should say. So, um, so a little bit of both, I suppose. Yeah. yeah, I think you have just got so many things under your name, and I try. You can't just say, "Oh, Chris is my guest today, and he's a historian," because yes, you are, but also you are this, and you're that, and you're a YouTuber in your own right, regardless of everything else that you do. Um, very just small, very very small channel. Yes. <laughs> no, you have information on your channel that is. I don't even know how you keep it in your brain. I'm guessing you don't. Uh, do you keep it in your brain at once, or is it look, sort of? I have. I have pretty good general general knowledge, um, mm -hmm. and then if it's something like really specific, obviously research required. But yeah. we've done so much stuff over like that the years that it sort of stays there. Yeah, and to put it together, you know, I will watch your videos about things that I I don't understand them, but I understand them when you say them, which is that's a really difficult thing to do, I think. So um, that's really yeah. kind. That's actually one of the things we we try to get across is actually making it kind of easy for people yeah. to understand, and there's not like that deep technical detail that that really deep history that some of the more yeah. sort of um, I guess scholarly historians do. Ours is a bit more sort of the consumable stuff. Yeah, yeah. accessible accessible history. You know, yeah. yeah. Hey, that's a good channel name. Yeah. Um, <laughs> there you go. Uh, we have a question from Louise who says, "How do you get started as a cruise ship lecturer?" Ah, so my story was different from most probably is um, when, when, when we wrote um, a book about the QE2 back in 2007, I wanted to get that book on the ship to be sold on the ship. And they, we were successful for that in 2008. Um, and then I contacted um, some contacts that I had at Cunard from doing like a lot of, I had a Cunard website for years. So I had a lot of mm -hmm. co kind of contacts there and said, look, I'll, I'll do anything to see this book on the ship. I'll fly over just oh, to wow. go on, just to go on for the day in Southampton. Yeah. Um, and they said, look, we, we can't really do that, but if you can do some talks, we might better get you into the lecture program. And one thing led to another, and that's how that sort of started. Mm -hmm. um, these days, it's a lot more sort of formal than that. Obviously, um, new, new starters would, would put in a sort of a resume with examples of what they've done in the past. Um, and and then there's an interview process, I think. Um, but I haven't had to I haven't had to be a new lecturer because once you're with one company, you kind of then can yeah. broaden out. So you know, Cunard, then PNO, then PNO Australia, and that sort of thing. Yeah. So I guess I got it easy. A tricky thing to kind of demonstrate before you do it. I, su I suppose you can show yourself public speaking and show you've got the knowledge, but yeah. It's a combination of all of those skills and to like hold an audience in a theatre. Um, Feels me, makes me feel quite sick. The idea of doing anything. Like I know that. you always, you always <laughs> say that, and I was like, your your video views get like ten x on what my lectures do, but <laughs> but, but it is. I don't see them. If I could see the people, I'd never get. You know, if I could see, if I if I if this was a Zoom call and I could see everybody in it, I would be. No, I'm going to talk. No, I'm not good no. at public speaking. No, no. not at all. But, That's the difference, I suppose. Like, I didn't think I was good at public speaking when I was younger, but um, the the Kiwi Two talk in two thousand eight, the first one, was probably the mm -hmm. what was the first time I did a big presentation in a big yeah. theatre. I'd done like stuff at uni and that, but um, there was probably about five hundred people, um, and uh, it was really well received because the ship was full of people who loved the ship. I was talking about the ship; everyone was happy with the with the talk. So I guess that gives the real sort of boost that you can you can do this. And, yeah. um, and now now I prefer that. You know, that's a nice Sorry? thing is that they've seen it on the schedule and they've chosen to go to it. Um, yes. And if you remember way back in when I did my first head shave, I did it in the theatre. It's the only time I've been on the theatre on, on the stage, and mm. it was weird because no one had come to see that. <laughs> it wasn't on the schedule. It was just, they thought, we'll do the head shave on the stage for charity while everyone's waiting for the regular show. So they were oh, kind of wow. just- wow. It's like a bonus entertainment. <laughs> exactly. I was just like, the while you're waiting, something's happening. But that was weird because, you know, there would be people just sat there like <laughs> really confused. And I, well, I can't blame them. <laughs> It was interesting, actually, in that first trip as well, because um, they introduced me as the youngest ever speaker to speak on QE2 in its 39 and a half year career. And there was definitely a sense of in the audience on that. Like I felt it on that first day, on that first talk, like what's this young 20 yeah, something what is doing? What does he know? <laughs> and it was like maybe 10 minutes in that the yeah. atmosphere became very, very friendly. And you realize, OK, you're among friends. They, yeah. they know you know your stuff. You're actually doing OK with this talk. And then you can kind of relax into it, which was really nice. 
Yeah. So once, once you've good, proven yeah. you know more than them, I guess, because some people might think that they know some stuff, particularly on um, some of, some of those ships. So I guess you. I think the thing is as well, like like with everything, even if you know your subject really well, there are going to be people in the audience who know certain things about your subject better than you do. Like on that trip, for example, there was people who built the ship who obviously knew the ship better um than than i did in that sort of respect and then you'll get talking to them and they'd share their stories and then they'd want you know you to share that as well and you have a big group yeah. and that's how you kind of build friendships and stuff as well so it was really and that's what i like the most about it actually is you do the talk you have this i mean for me it's just this thrilling experience of being able to stand there on the stage and deliver something mm -hmm. that you love but then afterwards people want to go and have a you know have a drink or have a beer with you or whatever and just talk to you about a topic that you love which you don't get even when you do the land-based stuff like people come to yeah. the to the museum they'll go to the talk and they'll go off and do the rest of their day but on the ships they just want to spend some time with you and that's really nice yeah oh that that yeah. sounds lovely that bit sounds all right <laughs> <laughs> you can't we'll convince me about that <laughs> we'll have to do it we'll have to do a trip on, on the same ship sometime and i can um i can give you some tips I'll, and I'll yeah, <laughs> <laughs> um Thank you, Brent, for my super chat. He says, thank you. Everyone hit the like button to Emma. Yes, if you can do that, YouTube likes that. And it kind of just means when you hit a like, it means those videos will follow you around on YouTube, which is kind of how YouTube works. Uh, we have a question from Peter, and he says, how do you look at slash feel about the non-classic cruise experience, such as MSC or any five or 6,000 passenger ships? Yeah, I mean, I, I actually really like um, the, the non classic experiences too so i think that's one of the things that i found quite a lot with having had started off with that sort of classic ocean liner style trip is that you do tend to meet quite a few people who that's that's their absolute preference mm -hmm. and so the other stuff just doesn't quite appeal but for me there's like different trips for different purposes and one of the best examples is p and o in australia because it is so mm -hmm. different from p and o yeah. uk it's so different from from cunard it's like it's just cheerful oh there's hudson <laughs> <laughs> it's cheerful and 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 casual and yeah, it's just party. chilled out and laid out and party kind of atmosphere and if you're going on board and that's what you're expecting it's just great fun and yeah. yeah like they're not the same experience at all so it's almost like if you're going on an adventure land-based holiday versus going mm -hmm. to a, a fancy hotel in a the city they're just totally different experiences yeah. um they just happen they just happen to be on ships so um i'd love to actually try like the oasis class i've never been on yeah. board it would be oh, amazing I booked, one. I booked one for next year so oh, did you but yes, I, I like all of them. Sometimes people ask me to describe, like, to compare things, like, oh, how is a a, a big MSC ship compared to a Cunard or compared to a river cruise? And mm. they're so different. Sometimes the only thing they've really got in common is that they're on the ocean or that yeah. not even the ocean. You know, sometimes they're just on water, some are on rivers. It's like comparing, like, um, people say, oh, what is the best cruise? And it's like, oh, oh. cruise is Chris is off <laughs> and it's like it's like asking what is the best food like it depends is it dinner time yeah is it, dessert? Is it like a snack uh, Bre 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 breakfast all day emma <laughs> it has to be breakfast all day breakfast is the worst <laughs> meal of the day you can skip you think it so? it's just, oh, really? I, just, it's, I just don't really like breakfast food i don't like getting up particularly early anyway so no. quite often if there's a breakfast buffet i'll miss it so <laughs> Oh, fair enough. Everyone's got their own tricks, I suppose. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's good. Everyone's all spread out, aren't they? Like, I, I'm, yeah, I'm not yeah. at 8 a.m. Yeah. Never, yeah, ever. Fair enough. That's good. The next question is from my mum. Hi, mum. Oh, hello. <laughs> uh, your mum's so lovely. She says, are you likely to be lecturing over in our part of the world in the next few years? If so, can you convince Emma to make it a family trip? You don't even need to convince me. If you're convinced <laughs> you to me, <laughs> the way you oh, want it. I'd love to. Yeah. I mean, I would say over the next couple of years, as long as the world doesn't go crazy again, um, then yeah, I, I would, I would definitely see that. I mean, I've got my eye on a few um, special trips that are, that are sort of coming up in the, in the schedule. I'm definitely very keen on the idea of doing something with Queen Anne when it comes out. Um, would love you too. Yeah. I'd love to do on the transatlantic as well though. Like I think that's the one, um, Emma, if you're going to yes. bring a family oh. trip on a lecture trip, it's got to be the transatlantic on QM2. Yes, honestly. Uh, very, very frequently, mum will be like, oh, this transatlantic, this one. Um, we haven't oh, found yeah. 
fits yet or there's always something but um I would like to sail back though I don't think I'd want to sail the other way because I want to come home afterwards and uh sure. have my jet yeah, lag I... better <laughs> yeah I guess that's it like the only thing I would say is that going there you're actually getting extra time on the ship but then I guess if you're oh. like for me for me in Australia it doesn't matter I'm going to be jet lagged regardless right yeah. <laughs> so, so but I guess if you're thinking of it that way it's, that's probably a good idea so, I just think it's it so nice, and it's not even—it's not even that expensive. Like I've always thought mm -hmm. that, like a proper transatlantic, like a proper Cunard one, would be really pricey. Mm -hmm. But sometimes the flights are more expensive than a cruise for a week. So um, yeah, it's a yeah. question of time. You know, most people can't take seven days to get <laughs> to get back. But especially if um, you think about um, the fact that you're traveling like much nicer than economy on a plane—that's for sure. You know, so much, yeah. And you can eat so much more in a week, and you. Oh, it sounds fantastic. <laughs> oh, yeah. Go to all those lectures. You can go to all the lectures, you know. Yeah, no, There's I, so many I, great, yeah. I will. I absolutely will. I, yeah. yeah. I, it's one of my ones, you know, to do. In the, it's on the list, yeah. In the, like a soon one, not like a... Got, People you've got so many interesting ships up that way though like there's all these brands that we we we've seen more and more coming back now but like you know the access to msc is so easy for, for you in mm -hmm. europe and um virgin voyages and i mean yeah. those ships look remarkable i mean i know it's, some of them are based in the u.s market but it's so much closer like everything for us mm -hmm. is like okay i gotta plan a 19-hour flight to, <laughs> to get yeah. there yeah. Well, that, yeah that's um yeah we're so lucky even if a ship is like a new ship is going over to the us it tends to stop in southampton or do like a couple of yeah. little cruises there um and they come back and forward but yeah the same way i think oh australia is so far away that's how you think for it, like to get yeah 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 well <laughs> so actually, i made I, my peace with that a long time ago <laughs> well, yeah, you are you are where you are um mark has a question i think this is an interesting one because he says what are your opinions on conspiracies and you must see these on youtube because i see these all the time i don't normally watch them um but whenever i say sometimes in a video i will say oh some people believe this or some people say this <laughs> you don't dare really do that do you i said something about um some people comment on titanic's like Maybe the windows opened in the uh, ocean. I, I don't know. I said something about it. And there's comments even to this day, years later. Um, but there's some yeah. really bizarre ones out there, like with Titanic being switched. and Yeah. I mean, this is the thing with that, right? Like, if you can imagine. <laughs> so one of the reasons why that, that one persists for so long, I think, is because there's mm -hmm. that iconic photograph of the two ships together in Belfast. Yeah. And so basically Olympic went into service first. Um, she was under the command of Captain Smith, who later went off to command Titanic. She mm -hmm. was leaving leaving Southampton and had a collision with a, a, a Royal Naval vessel called the Hawk, and it damaged her propeller shaft and her hull, and she had to go back to Belfast for repairs. So mm -hmm. there she is coming into Belfast, and you've got Tit Titanic next to her and the Olympic there. And if, uh, as the conspiracy goes, um, somehow, secretly, in the dead of night, they managed to switch the two ships around. Um, Olympic being completed and then having to have retrofitting done to make her look like the Titanic interior wise because there were some differences and mm -hmm. Titanic which was not yet complete was all of a sudden miraculously in the configuration of, of Olympic the, yeah people can't people can't keep a secret about like you know no, any, anything no. let alone switching two ships I think it's nonsense <laughs> but yeah. it does persist it does persist it does I I, yeah. I suppose maybe people just think oh there's not uh, you know, a lot of the photos are not of Titanic, so maybe they just think, I yeah. guess there's yeah. some photos of Titanic, but there's not a huge amount, is there? So it's maybe because like 50, like, I mean, I would say um, the majority of people don't realize that, that the photographs they're looking at of Titanic aren't of Titanic. And then when they find out about it, they're like, well, it must be, you know, it must yeah. be a big secret. Yeah, they must have changed yeah. it. Titanic didn't even exist. Yeah. Um, basically, yeah. phot photography was really expensive, and so mm -hmm. they would only they'd only waste they'll spend the money on the on the class leader. Um, yeah, you know, but that's why you have pictures of Titanic. Well, yeah, exactly. I mean, well, like, similarly, but I mean, obviously now it's just so easy to take photographs or anything. And the other thing to remember, of course, is that Titanic was only in service for like a few days. So there wasn't enough time for passengers to really take pictures of her any great length yeah. um, either. So, yeah. yeah. But I guess it's interesting. It just, it works well on YouTube, doesn't it? All of these sort of uh, most, like, you what? can just say something ridiculous and you can get like a million trillion views on it. So, Well, one of, the, one of the cable channels here did a, um, 
uh, did a documentary about the fire in the Titanic's um, okay. uh, uh, coal bunker. And look, I mean, coal fires happened on coal powered ships, coal fires in the bunkers happened on coal fired ships, and Titanic may well probably did have a, a coal fire. I mean, that sounds like it was fairly well documented. But mm -hmm. there's this picture of the Titanic, and it's it, there's this dark mark on the hull. Now it's right. like decks above the waterline, and that this documentary is saying, look, you can see evidence of it. And it's like, well, firstly, that's above the boiler. It's not actually over the boiler, it's over the cargo hold, and it's above the waterline. So why would that have impacted the yeah. ship ship's iceberg contact at all? It's just <laughs> it's just it doesn't make any sense, you know. <laughs> just like so I think it's interesting. Like, yeah. It's yeah, it's, it's good fun. I see I see them go by on YouTube, but um yeah, I don't normally watch sort of things like that. Because the um, other one, Emma, is, is there's lots of stuff about um, Queen Mary and her like being haunted, and you you've oh, yeah. been on board. I, yeah, I have a video that's slightly like that, but it's based yeah. on I stayed on board and sort you of stayed on board. Yeah, what was my what, what they they told me, of course, because there, there's a long list of people who have died in some very gruesome ways. Because it, it it was over decades, so yeah, you know, yeah. Um, but I think it was kind of the you know touristy thing is to make it haunted and, and make it yeah creepy. well it's part of you know it's part of the the um attraction part of it i suppose yeah which i i, I understand and i'm a, a little bit guilty of that but i didn't say like i stayed on i just said <laughs> i stayed on no no ship. i just i just thought was. it was i thought it was interesting to hear like your your perspective of actually being on a ship that's had all those conspiracies about it like yeah. was that a big push on board or was oh. it just part of yeah, I think so. They do all the ghost tours and the haunted at yeah. night tours and stuff. I mean, I didn't appreciate it. And I was a teenager. I wasn't paying attention. I was probably on my phone texting someone or something. I had no plans for a cruise vlog. Like, that was so... <laughs> that was my, I didn't even, it didn't exist. So, um, but I would like to go back and, you know, when she's, when she's ready and uh, stay on board again. We have a question. It says, how do you feel about using the standard Hudson as a unit of measurement? So I started measuring um, the size of showers with toothpaste tubes because yes. I didn't have anything to measure showers with when I was yes. there. And That's I think a good idea. Hudson's about three toothpastes, and then we were working out a cookie is about half a toothpaste, and we've got this whole thing. <laughs> so you'd be, you'd be like it's, um, you know, 10,000 Hudson's long kind of thing for the yeah. ship. Yeah, I think, I think you could, I think you, well, you're taking over the world already with your, with your channel, so I think we could, uh, we could, we could make that work. <laughs> we could. Yeah, there's so, there's so many. I see so many comments all the time. Um, you know, I'll say, oh, this, uh, I, I did one about the Norwegian the sun I was on on the carpet, there's fish that show you which uh -huh. way is forward. So I said, oh, it's 850 feet long or something. And there's so many comments that's like, how many toothpaste is that? <laughs> <laughs> it's, good though. it's actually quite a good idea to put it into like a, a measurement that people can understand, right? Like yeah, we all know what sort of a tube of toothpaste looks like. So Exactly. Yeah. But then I start getting tagged in comments of people using like the travel toothpaste. So like they've got this huge, I, I thought a toothpaste was pretty uh, standard. standard. As a, but I know, there's little ones on the airlines and then these huge exactly. giant jumbo packs <laughs> exactly. so it's not the most fancy important. ones where you push the top and it comes out and you don't even have to yeah. squeeze the bottle i mean we haven't even gone to that yet but yeah, yeah. I was just, it, was just a, it was just a hand i didn't even really think about it i just shared a photo because um my asthma is tiny so i've actually heard another um youtuber refer to things by the size of a um, snickers bar because they're oh, really? quite standardized. Yeah, so there's so many yeah. Snickers bars long. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. That makes a bit yeah. more sense. But now we've got Hudson's in, in the mix as well. So That's good. I haven't well, measured Hudson. He's quite, a, he's quite a big cat, though. He's as, as big as some dogs, for sure. You should um, measure him in toothpaste length so that there's, like, an official measurement. <laughs> Next time he lays down, I'll just put one like on. <laughs> uh, he probably wouldn't mind. He's so, he's so chilled out. With me, he's chilled out. With anyone, if people come around, he runs away. He's still quite shy. But with me, he's the most... Like, just yeah, just, he just tolerates me most of the time. Some stranger tried to put toothpaste measurements next to me, probably scratched their eyes out. But he, yeah, he's okay. <laughs> you might even think, oh, there must be a reason why Emma's doing this. Maybe I'll get some dreamies. Maybe I'll get some cat yogurt. Um, but he's back eating dreamies again now because he had to go to the dentist, so he had to stop eating dreamies for a little while, and he didn't okay. understand. Wine. He didn't like it, but he's. he's I have I have no idea what a dreamy is. So there we go. <laughs> well, something else in America is probably called so, something else for you, like cat treats. Okay. All right. You shake them, and then the cat comes running. Okay. Um, cool. Temptations or something in the U.S. So 
maybe the same. Uh, sometimes, sometimes my Britishisms are the same in Australia, and sometimes yeah. do not. Do well, we, not we've got a bit of a mix here because, like, it was very apparently it was very British, like the language, until uh, after World War Two, and then Americanisms came in. So we've got like a bit of both. Yeah, we that still spell colour with a U though. So good. Yeah, good. <laughs> Yeah. most of the time yeah i think most of the time you know australia will yeah. back me up and stuff yeah <laughs> but you, most you, of the you, time. Take, you take things like we shorten things here but oh my you gosh we'll take it you take it <laughs> we, were, we were talking about this what was the one you asked me and what's the message Do doco for documentary because yep. like all oh, my favorite docos and i was like what's yep. a doco? that's, <laughs> that's definitely amazing. true yeah, because we yeah. say things all the time. I'll be like, "Oh, I'll do it in a mo." Or like we shorten things like that, but you just put O's on the end of everything and make it like. Oh, it just... and names too. Everyone's got an O on the end of the name here too. Like you know. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so cool. You'd have to. You'd have to um, have a translator <laughs> yeah, <laughs> when you come to visit. Yeah. Oh, it's cool. I love it. I'm happy to adopt any any of those words. They're all cool. Uh, we have a question which says, uh, what editing software do we use? Um, do you use only your phone? So I use a combination. I use more and more my phone now. You know, I'm using this. This webcam is my phone. And I also have a DJ pocket that I use when I'm on the cruises. Um, I'm just changed. I've left Final Cut Pro after like three years of learning how to use Final Cut Pro. I thought in an attempt to make my editing faster because it takes me many, many days, I'll just start from the beginning again. So I started, now I use DaVinci, um, which is very good so far if yeah. anyone's looking for an editor. But I started on, on iMovie, the, the free iMovie for, I don't know, three or four years <laughs> almost. Yeah. And then I just found myself needing to do, like layering up more things and stuff. And now I'm I'm just I'm just trying to make it faster now because it, it takes a long time to put together a YouTube video as um, Chris will agree yeah. with. Me, Absolutely. Fantastic. I still use iMovie um, yeah. and getting footage is generally a combination between yeah, an SLR camera <laughs> and um, an iPhone 13, which has actually got a really good daylight camera. So yeah. sometimes it's not worth carrying the big camera around anymore. Yeah. Um, I have a problem like that. For my life, for my like when I sit down and do videos at home, but I don't take them out on cruises because I don't want people to look at me either. Um, and the phone is just, it does a really good job, you know, especially if you're in like um, an atrium where there's bright white lights and then dark bits. Yeah, None of yeah. Them, they probably, it's probably, I don't know what settings to, to sort out my DJ on and stuff, but the phone knows. So I just use my yeah, phone. Does it? Yeah. Especially if you're like on a ship tour and you don't have time. Yeah. Like when we did um, the visit on board um, Pacific Encounter, you were in each room for about you know, 30 seconds, maybe yeah. a minute. And so th there was a couple of people who had obviously the big cameras and they're trying to change the settings and then things mm -hmm. moving on. And so they had like a slow group and I kind of hung around with them to get all the video footage. But it, it's just easier sometimes to pull the phone out. Um, our first book, we actually took pictures with just a little pocket um, really? digital camera. And I remember the ship was sailing out of Australia for the last time. It was doing its um, farewell uh, Australia tour. This is the QE2 book. And mm -hmm. um, we're taking pictures with our camera of the farewell um, little little camera like this big. And then this person comes down next to us with this enormous lens and kind of, yeah. you know, and I was like, I feel so inadequate taking these pictures with a tiny camera for a book and you've got this massive SLR. Um, yeah. the, the quality of their pictures must have been so wonderful, but um, I don't know. know I think you need, right. to, uh, you need to be willing to put the time into learning those cameras. I think. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, yeah, which I'm not, <laughs> so I just well, could. and it you works. Know, it works, and you know, it's so much better just to before. If you, if, I used to kind of take a camera out and go out and try and film things, and if you do that, you're never going to find anything interesting. Interesting mm. things happen when you're just, you know, walking back to the ship and yeah. you bump something or yeah. you walk around and you walk by something so um phones are pretty easy like you can complete you can yeah. absolutely do a youtube channel with just a phone like there's no no question of that phones are pretty amazing uh, yeah, we have a question the shorts sorry the shorts are right. good with the phone the shorts are yeah. good with the phone because the the um orientation yeah. yeah if anything i think it's better you know sometimes you see these really professional it's supposed to be behind the scenes. It's supposed to be kind of casual for a YouTube short or a TikTok or anything. So um, it's normally better just to do it with a phone. Yeah. We have a 
question, and I don't know if there's an if there's any sort of right answer for this question, but it says, sure. are there any best cruise destinations for lectures? Are there some parts of the world where you know people are just partying all the time, <laughs> and some parts where it's more, you know, is it kind of where the P and O are and where the Q N R are? Yeah, um, I mean, um, in my experience, like, well, firstly, I'm only booked on t um, trips that they want a lecturer or lecturers mm -hmm. on. So, like in Australia, P and O Australia, they don't put lecturers on the short trips, like mm -hmm. the party cruises. They only yeah. do them on the longer trips where there's three or four sea days. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know the audience. The audience on the Cunard ships for me has been really good, but I think that's obviously because of the history of the company and the history that I'm talking about. They kind of blend nicely together. Um, P and O UK is pretty good too. Although I did, um, I've had some of my best audiences on P and O UK, and then on one particular Aurora trip, we had three days in the Bay, of, well, two days in the Bay of Biscay and rough seas, and everyone was sick. Yeah. Um, and then the third day, it was out in the Mediterranean, and it was beautiful and sunny. And I think there was like twelve people in the six hundred seat theater, and that was a really awkward situation because <laughs> everyone was having a good day for the first time. They didn't want to be inside the ship after being sick for three days. Yeah, yeah um, fair which enough. is fair enough. But you have to just whether it's one person. Whether if, if I actually remember being told on the first trip that if there's no one in the lecture theater, you still start because someone might walk in and if there's no one in there, they're going to record it for the TV. So just give the talk to the empty chair. Yeah, and that would be the worst feeling ever. <laughs> but you just have to kind of do it. But, you know, you've yeah. seen that picture. You've seen that picture of, um, you used it on the thumbnail for this one, mm -hmm. the Queen Mary 2's yeah. illumination. That was, that was, um, that's a 600 plus and that was full. And there were people standing in the aisles. I actually had to make an announcement to say, please get out of the aisles. That was by Amazing. far the most epic moment ever <laughs> yeah, that's so yeah. Cool. it sounds that similar to my, uh, my christmas cruise where we went down to the canary islands through the bay of biscay and uh we had really rough really rough weather and we ended up with extra sea days because we couldn't dock and um when my friend and agent emma sent me this christmas tree it says on the note hope you have a great christmas less seasick than last year <laughs> yeah absolutely <laughs> but we, we did have some lectures on there um I can't remember who they were. They weren't, they were, one was a politician or something. I can't remember, <laughs> but I didn't go to most of those. Um, there's, there's actually some destinations, like if you're going to say Alaska or um, mm -hmm. maybe the fjords or the Panama Canal, they'll have like people talking about that specific part of the world and about the nature or in the canals um, case, they'll talk about how the canal was built and how it was yeah. operated. Those are really good because they're kind of themed around what the ship is doing. Mm -hmm. um, some of the best ones that I've done have been around anniversary voyages or commemorative voyages like in 2015 for the anniversary of Lusitania, for example. Mm -hmm. um, that was really, really good for, for talks and all of the talks were themed around that topic. So it just made the whole, yeah, that was like part of the cruise. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. You can see the sun is setting now. I told you the sun sets at about half three in England at the moment, um, but we can see it going down. I put some lights on. I was just seeing uh, Lou says that Viking have enjoyable lectures. Should do a, a yeah. lecture on Viking. That would be very nice, wouldn't it? I'd love to. They yeah. also um, Seaborn as well. Um, apparently has a really good program. Um, mm -hmm. Silver Sea Celebrity. Like yeah. if anyone's listening, I'm I'm, I'm available. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't yeah. know that if ever I find I I tell everyone about you all the time. You oh, know thank I mean? you. And I'm like, well, I have a friend. It makes you know, I I know someone. Who does that. Well, you get it. You get a mention on the podcast every every couple of weeks because it's like we're yeah. talking about a new sh new ship, and I'll be like, oh, Emma's just done a video about that. Because you, you, you spoke to Baz, so he's always he's always up for that too. Yeah, particularly yeah. particularly on Twitter. How is your is your life better since you left Facebook and Instagram? Because I it's, I see you to go tag, and then I'm like, oh, he's gone. Good for him. <laughs> It's it's so for me it's so much better. It's yeah. so much better. Like, um, yeah, and it's not just because of that whole like time thing. It's just that that this. I mean, I did a video about it, the scamming mm -hmm. situation and the yeah. and the um, identity theft stuff. It was just um, it's such. There's words for it that I won't use on your on your channel. Um, <laughs> so it's just so much yeah. better for me. And look, the the YouTube channel. I mean, I haven't I hadn't spent too much time on it in twenty. 22 because I had a few other things on but we've kind of got back into that now and it doesn't seem to be making any difference like the engagement's just as no, good as it was no. before um so 
you know, just focus on the things. The podcast is doing really, really well. The YouTube good. channel's doing okay. Back traveling yeah. again. Yeah. Get to talk to you. It's all good. <laughs> very sensible. Yes, I do. I mean, you got hit very, very, very hard with the scammers and the the everything on Instagram. Like, it was ridiculous. Yeah. The amount of accounts that were pretending to be you. It happens to me occasionally, but it's 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 a rare thing, and I can get them shut down. Whereas for you, it was yeah. just. Well, I got to the point where, where, where Instagram and Facebook were blocking my requests to shut them down and saying yeah. that I was I was abusing the system by putting in too many requests to have these scam channels shut down. I thought, nah, I'm done. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely not. You must yeah. have a very trustworthy face is all I can say. <laughs> oh, thank you. Well, I guess I can I can take that as a, as must a be, positive. That's the silver lining, I guess, but yeah, yeah guess not so. very good. <laughs> Um, a question from Peter, and he says, "Would you lecture on Disney's ten thousand passenger ship if you were invited?" <laughs> <laughs> if I was invited, yes, I would. <laughs> um, if I, I got know. to do, if I got to choose a Disney ship, it probably wouldn't be that one. I think um, the, the existing fleet that was kind of custom designed um, mm -hmm. with all of that unique ocean liner styling yeah. built into them, um, I would love yeah. to try and. You know, the thing is for us is because it's so far to get to some of these ships. They are starting to think about coming to Australia. There's a Disney ship coming here in, oh, in the coming season. But, the, just, you know, every, everyone wants to get on board. The, the fares are just so, like, you yes. know, as you can imagine, because it's Disney, it's just so unique. Yeah. I mean, Disney is very expensive everywhere, so I can't even imagine if you, you know, okay, we don't get them that much in Europe, but occasionally when we do, you know, the price of a week to Norway is four times what it would be with, any other cruise line just because they only do like two and then they go back <laughs> so yeah 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 Australia, i can't even imagine can't even imagine um yeah i guess how long does it take you to get to you know if you were to go across to like california like if you want to do one on that side of america how long would could you like by plane or by ship yeah, by plane well it would be uh what is it it's like something like 12 hours i think to from mm -hmm. sydney and that's no. over that's over um you know that's over ocean the whole way so there's, you can stop off at hawaii if you wanted to break it up a bit yeah um but then if you're going anywhere further than that of course it's the hub so you kind of fly you know into say la or dallas and then you can yeah. then go up from there um quite often you know that's but mo like for us like so many of the flights come out of sydney or out of um, melbourne but if you're in any other major cities mm -hmm. brisbane has quite a few too but you, if you depending on where you're going you might have to go south to go north it's yeah, yeah. And, and, and and everything is still trying to pick up here, like because they shut everything down so so um, severely, I suppose, mm -hmm. that yeah, the capacity yeah. is just not quite back yet. So airfare prices, it's interesting because I did the, the, the trip to Europe in 2019 for the transatlantic trip and I mm -hmm. remember like what the prices were for that. And then yeah. just recently I looked at what it would be like to do it now because I, I thought maybe I might try and yeah. get a transatlantic in. Um, and it was something like four times the price really? just to get there. Yeah, it's just not feasible at the moment. Yeah. yeah. Oh, goodness. I mean, things, flights seem to be back to normal for us here now. You know, I just booked flights um, back yeah. from Barcelona. The return was £17. Like I added, I added a bag on, so it was more expensive. But it is crazy to me I can fly from Barcelona to London cheaper than if I was to get the train, like for the same amount of time in England, <laughs> which yeah. is because yeah um, there's, no, there's no flights for 17 pounds here no, no you, you get like to sit in the plane like take a picture no, you can you could, you could stand on the gate at the airport and look in <laughs> yeah go to like a lounge or something um yeah. cruise boys are here hello cruise boys and they say just like magic um cruise boys have joined the call yes they are they were they were working well i think they're still working because it's still kind of the work day here in england but um thank you for making it i know paul and carol are on their way um, for oh, their cool. Asimara Australia adventure, and they're doing 30 oh, nights, great. Yeah. nights or something, which will be absolutely amazing. That's um, so cool. Oh, Lou's booked some flights from Melbourne. Very nice. $3,100. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, that's a long way. Um, yeah, so what, what, do, what plans do you have coming up? You can be as vague or as specific as you like. Well, I'm going to be traveling on your, your favorite ship, I think, if she, if she still is your favorite ship, Norwegian Spirit. 
Oh yeah, she's still my favorite. Yeah, Absolutely. she's still your favorite. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to be traveling on her. She's just had a big um, that hundred million dollar refit, and we, we'll be coming to Australia soon. So, if you need um, any like before footage, I filmed like a before ship tour with the plan. Oh, cool. And, and I've got I've got everything, but I have no. Oh, after. that's brilliant. I maybe about, I, maybe I, I might ask you for yeah. some help with that. That's very cool. Honestly, it's all I've got yeah. it all. Right. <laughs> oh, that's great. Yeah, because I mean, obviously, she started off. Um, as a Star Cruisers ship, and mm -hmm. I, I remember seeing her in Australia when they had the, the SAR um, outbreak meant that all of the oh, um, yeah. Star Cruisers fleet came to Australian waters for, mm -hmm. for quite, a, quite a long time, about four or five months. Um, and then, yeah, so that's going to be really exciting. And my first time on NCL, so that's going to be great. And, um, you know, they've just also, like, I mean, they're just su such a big presence in terms of the impact they've made on cruising, um, you know, from the very beginning so it's going to be great from a historical point of view to go on board as yeah. well um nice. i've got some stuff coming up on cunard and some stuff coming up on piano australia <laughs> um which nice. sort of takes us sort of the middle of next year so it's yeah it's kind of getting back to normal which is nice yeah. i think because i used yeah. to ask you and you were like i'm waiting <laughs> i'm waiting <laughs> so it's like you have plans um but yeah, i remember there's one time we were talking you think you'd been traveling and i was like well i, I saw the um coral geographer in the harbor <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, goodness, i'm so happy you can cruise again i remember being on norwegian spirit uh, it must have been 2019 i went on norwegian mm. spirit just before her big refit and it had superstar leo still in the, the picture frames and things it was oh, really, really yeah in all of the cabins but an inside cabin they had like a picture window that it said superstar leo on it from that whenever wow, they oh from you know. a long time ago too yeah I, okay i need to know what they did with those because i was like i'd have one of those that's quite cool you know it's my first cruise on that ship um well, i think it's, it's one of the most extensive if, if not the most ex extensive refits that at the yeah. ncl done of their current yeah. ships they they've made it much more NCL mm. as in put big TV screens everywhere and lots of seats and stuff. Because before there was this really nice double staircase with a water feature in it and a piano, and it took yep. up a lot of space. So I understand why they you know the atrium was huge. But there's nothing really in it. So it was just kind of yeah. go to reception, take some pictures with the Christmas trees and stuff. But they've taken all of that out, put new stairs in, put like TVs there, and it looks more. It looks more like it fits in with the other Norwegian ships now. Um, but cool. I kind of liked it because it didn't fit in with any other ships. It was very, I'd never been on a ship really? like that. never been yeah. on one since. But I'd love to get back on board and see. Um, see what they've done to her, yeah. I mean, I, I'll, I'll be doing, um, we're, we're doing podcasts from on board the ship and um, some video stuff in terms of a tour and, um, and yeah. the NCL experience. Well, I think of the NCL experience for the first time. So, um, I'll, but, I, you know, when I'm there, I'll send you some. And just mm -hmm. stuff as well, so you can see because I know you won't want to wait, you want to see what they've done to her. <laughs> I want to see, and I, I yeah. mean, it may just be that it, it it's unrecognizable, it's completely different because yeah, she's I even got a new hull out, like if they even changed the yeah. color scheme of the outside, yeah. yeah. Maybe they just thought we'll just start again with this one. She was quite old, I think, like late 90s, maybe is that ship? I can't yeah, remember, yeah, yep, yeah, 98, I think it was, something like yeah, something so like I guess. But yeah, I'm really interested in it. But I do, I did film. I did. I don't remember what camera it was on. It might not be fantastic, but I did film a before ship tour <laughs> back then. So uh, yeah, just I'll send all that Thanks. to you. Cool. Uh, we have a question from Chris, and he says, "Question for Chris from Chris. Uh, <laughs> Hello, Chris. Do you approached by passengers on your ships uh, on the topics that you're lecturing about, or would you rather talk about anything else or be left alone?" <laughs> I actually, I, I do get approached um, a lot and I actually quite enjoy it. So um, it, because I think it's one of those places where when you're interested in ships and you want, you know, you talk about ships a lot, it's one of the places where you actually get people who are interested to talk back mm -hmm. and come up and talk yeah. to you. Whereas quite often it's like, you know, people having conversations about, you know, what they do for a living and you're like, hey, well, I do, you know, cruise ship yeah. YouTubing and work like, and maritime history and then they go oh that sounds interesting like you know whereas yeah. on the ship you actually mm -hmm. um have can have a conversation with people and quite often when it's on you know when you're doing the lectures about the history people realize that they actually have like quite a connection already so maybe their family immigrated on one of the ships that's been mentioned or somebody served in world war ii on one of the ships that you talked about or somebody that they know in their past maybe worked on one of the ships so there's like a lot of personal connections that people don't necessarily even realize that they have yeah. and then they want to share that and that's when you get some of the most like amazing insights 
um, but also some really good friends. Like we've got friends that we met in lectures who we still, you know, for years we're still in touch with. Um, one person that I met at a talk, I co-authored two books with. Um, so, and if yeah. you hadn't come up to have a conversation, you never would have done that. So, yeah, mm -hmm. I, I, I enjoy it. That's amazing. Yeah. That sounds very really cool. cool. It's and really it's cool. And I, I love Chris. I love Chris's. I mean, Chris has got a picture of Geordie there as his um, from Star Trek as his. Um, some, as his some, <laughs> I can't. I can't read the text I on it. But... Einstein problems, but something. Another type of ship, a starship. Yeah. yeah, I suppose so. I suppose when you're on these to give a lecture, you're on there too. You're you're in. You know, you're in the right headspace. You've got all of this stuff in your brain, so it's quite. Yeah quite nice you know what's strange as well is like doing the trips um the re recent trips to where it's for the podcast or for the youtube channel mm -hmm. um and you're not on the program it's kind of weird being incognito <laughs> if that makes sense yeah. um and um i was walking around the ship actually and I'd completely forgotten like that anyone would recognize what i who i am or what i'm doing and i was wearing the big cruise podcast shirt and mm -hmm. it kind of just popped out of my head. And then next minute, some, somebody started having a conversation with me about something that I said on the podcast. And I was like, hang on, what? I have to take a double take. Where is when you're there as a lecturer, you're expecting it, like, because yeah. that's what you're there for. So you kind of are prepared every time someone comes up. It's just you're part of the entertainment program. So, yeah. um, and I really like it. I really enjoy the conversation. Good. I guess that's like for me, if I'm on a cruise ship, I'm completely willing and ready for anyone to talk to me. If anyone looks at me, I'll try and smile and, you know, but as soon as I step off the ship, I completely it doesn't cross my mind that anyone would talk to me. So I've been out before, you know, I'll have a drink or something and someone will say, oh, you don't you don't like ice in your drink from like where I've said it on YouTube or, oh, you um, I thought that was you. And then you ordered a Pepsi and now I know it's you. And I'm like, That's <laughs> <laughs> I actually, bu I actually bumped into fun. somebody at the shops, um, the local shopping center. Uh, she called me over to have a chat and she's been on previous trips. Um, and is going on a future trip that I'm booked on. And, you know, we were having a conversation. She's like, I don't think you're on the website um, in in the speaker program, at, you know, because they, they feature the speakers. And it was just interesting to, to like, firstly see somebody locally because it doesn't happen all that often. Yeah. Um, and then to know that they had specifically taken the time to look to see if I was going to be talking there. It's really quite, oh. you know, it's very touching to know that people care. Yeah. It's, it's good. Yeah. It's cool. I have that once when I was local and I was, you know, when everything shut down, we first got our vaccines and I did like six months of helping at the vaccine yeah. center. So we had the yeah. mask on, like dr dr not dr like dressed up in whatever I had to wear, like a high vis jacket and stuff. And someone was like, I recognize your voice. <laughs> That's so weird. They were so yeah. nice, and lovely. But I just was, I was in the mood of like, I've got to check these people. They're there for 15 minutes. Like I'm in my different mindset completely to thinking about cruises. Yeah, um, for sure. Strange, but pretty cool. Oh, hello, the John. In the chat, they've got a question. Okay, go ahead. You accept the question? Right, we've got we've got a we've got a slight um, delay. I think sometimes. Oh, okay. Um, Johnny and Will says, have there ever been an awkward question by a passenger who thinks they know more on a topic than one you have researched and lectured on? <laughs> Uh, yeah, look, I mean, um, there's quite often times where people will, will will want to tell you facts that they know, and sometimes, like, sometimes <laughs> there's sometimes there's stories that have been shared widely in books or in media that when you've like done research from primary sources, you, you kind of have a slightly different um, uh, there's a different sequence of events, basically. But the funniest one, actually. Um, and it's actually one of the nicest stories, is on the, on the very ev first ever talk I did, um, going back to that first one again, um, mm -hmm. I decided then I wouldn't do a Q and A because at the end of the talk, because I thought um, my first time speaking on board, someone's yeah. gonna try and trip me up. So mm -hmm. the lecture ended, rounds of applause, all that sort of thing, people started leaving, but then a group of people generally will come down to the front to have a chat to the lecturer at any mm -hmm. talk. Um, and there's these people here talking, you know, oh, you did a good job. Or, That's really interesting what you said about that. I was on the QE2 on these dates. And then somebody says to me, so just a tiny bit of background. When they built the QE2, they had a steel hull and an aluminium superstructure. It was done to lighten the ship to allow them to put an extra deck on. Okay. Those, two metal, those two metals don't go well together. They corrode. Okay. So you have uh -huh. to put a special liquid between the two and then use a special kind of rivet to connect them up. All right. That's the backstory. 
So that's what's in the lecture, mm -hmm. that kind of level of detail. Yeah. And somebody says to me loudly in front of everybody, um, what kind of metal was used to in the rivet that's used to join the two oh, okay. right. together? Mm -hmm. um, and of course, I didn't know the answer to that. Yeah. So I was kind of like standing there, um, well, uh, you know, trying to think, how am I going to get out of this question? Yeah. And then I hear this voice, this wonderful Scottish accent, you know, I know the answer to this. So this older man comes and stands up and oh. uh, he ex explains the answer about that the, the, the metal itself was coated in an epoxy so it didn't corrode, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, and after the talk, I said to him, look, how did you know that? That's so awesome. And he's yeah. like, well, I, I was the man standing there driving the rivets into the ship. He'd helped build it. Um, mm -hmm. So he knew how they did it. And so I just said to him, please come to all the talks. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. But that's the sort of thing, like from from a from a situation where I think somebody was probably either very interested in mm -hmm. label architecture or was trying yeah. to trip me up, one of the two. Yeah. Um, and then this lovely person comes to your rescue, and then you know we ended up having having a coffee together and having a big chat about building the ship. And it was just it was just so nice that somebody came to this you know young lecturer's rescue. <laughs> it was really yeah. sweet. Oh, how funny! That's amazing. Yeah. They were there though. My goodness. Yeah, I know, right? Like that that's I think that's what was special about that trip as well. Talking about great trips to do lectures on. A farewell mm -hmm. trip or any ship, if you've got yeah. a farewell trip and it's doing its final thing, um yeah. there will also also be really special voyages because everyone comes to say their goodbyes. And that yeah. was one of those. Yeah. Oh, but then also your knowledge has to end at some point. Like that sounds like science <laughs> rather than yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. You know, everything every time yeah i think with me it's um i have a little bit of the technical knowledge which i think some people appreciate because i find it fascinating mm -hmm. but then when it comes to like the deep like intricate workings that's what you need an engineer for yeah. uh, and there's some really great engineering channels i mean there's a really great um some really great ship related engineering channels out there that they talk mm -hmm. about this sort of stuff. And I find that those channels fascinating, yeah. um, but that's, that, you know, they've got engineering degrees. So <laughs> it's a very different. Mm. Um, I do uh, if they can translate it to a way that I can pay attention to it. I think like mm. your videos, you take things that are complicated, but I pay attention and I understand them. Don't quiz me on them afterwards, <laughs> but oh, I understand. I know, I know if I need to know any, I'll just, I'll ask you and you'll know. Or you'll know who to find the answer from, which is so helpful. Um, That's very kind. <laughs> but I'm on I'm on TikTok now because it's good fun. But every time you post anything, the comments are just like, but the Titanic. But the Titanic. <laughs> or occasionally Costa Concordia. That's the other one that people bring up on TikTok. Um, yeah. But it's very... It's because it's a quick, it's a quick um, format, I suppose. They, wanted, they just want the one that they know rather than having the time to <laughs> understand why the rest of them are interesting. I guess so, but it was quite a long time ago. And you I, know what's I, interesting I, as well? I, yeah. my Titan, I've done some Titanic videos. Mm -hmm. I, was doing, I was looking at this just the other day. My Titanic videos perform so badly on a oh, topic really? that is so interesting. That's so true. many people. And yet, like, I can do something on the Queen Mary 2 on exactly the same. Like, there's one QM2 versus QE2, and then there's a, mm -hmm. which is done really well. And then there's a QM2 versus Titanic, which is done absolutely miserably. And I would have, I would have thought it would be the other way around because Titanic yeah, is I'm such sure. a popular ship. So maybe I should just leave that whole topic alone. <laughs> yeah, maybe people are just so saturated in it now and there's it's so done. Yeah. everywhere. So it's quite nice, you know, you do something slightly a little bit different. But, yeah, I'm not, I'm not. Uh, yeah, Lou says he loves your Titanic vids. They are very interesting. Oh, thank you, Lou. That's very kind. <laughs> yeah, Cruise Boys say someone asked us if we were on the back of the Titanic on a short yesterday on the MSCC view. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's what I mean. That's what we kind of come up against. But that's hilarious. Um, you should have yeah. done it with like a diving mask on or something. You know, yeah. like how <laughs> kind of thing. Yeah, make it all like um like black and white and like we'll age the photo like it's been in the sea. But yeah, bizarre. Yeah. We have a question about uh, Christmas. Have you ever been on a Christmas cruise? Any cr Christmassy cruise bands? I haven't been on a Christmas cruise, but I've been on cruises near Christmas when the ship's decorated. So mm -hmm. yeah. Um, always have Christmas at so far, but always have Christmas at home. But um, yeah. it's quite nice when the ship's all like nice. festive as well, though. Yeah, it, it's. Um, sort of I remember like visiting the um, last day of my last cruise, like 
the last day Christmas arrived. <laughs> oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because I remember visiting the um, the Boudicca from Fred Olsen, mm -hmm. um, and they had all these massive gingerbread houses that they built throughout the ship. Yeah. Um, and it was just like, it's so different from what you would see any other time. Yeah, they do that on Norwegian a lot, but you see the same Christmas, the gingerbread things there for like, I don't know what they do with them at the end, but you see them there for like weeks and weeks and weeks and people have like kicked things off of them. Oh, <laughs> like, they're going to get sick if they're eating that. Everyone's touching it. <laughs> yeah, I think of all the kids and stuff, they see like this giant, they're going to yeah, try. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're going to try and eat it for sure. Really something. But yeah, for at sure. the end of it, they've got like, uh, it probably just goes down right where the re rest of the food waste goes. It ends up fish food, like gingerbread fish food. Yeah. Uh, they, yeah, they, they really go all out on the, the gingerbread houses on that. They do. It's cool. Uh, my mom says that she really enjoys your QM2 videos. She does. And my grand really enjoys your videos as well. Um, oh, that's so sweet. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> watch them and send, send me the links and stuff. And you send me the links as well. And you're not normally the I first to send me them. I'm normally I've got them from somewhere else as well. Oh, uh, uh, no. I just I want to make sure I've got at least three views per video. That's the only thing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You guys are so lovely. Uh, Lou says he had a 10, 10 feet by 10 feet gingerbread house on Oceana. Oh, wow. I can't even there imagine a 10 foot gingerbread house. Feet. No. Feet. What's, the, what's, feet. That in, what's, that in, what's that in Hudson's? On toothpaste. I don't know. <laughs> We need to standardize it, like how many yeah. you know, inches is a toothpaste, and then I can work do it you out. Know, do you know there was actually a standardization? It's called the metric system. <laughs> <laughs> we moved away from that to go back to toothpaste. Oh, have you? Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, apparently they should feed the gingerbread to the crew and the YouTubers. I don't think I'd want to eat it after it had been there for a couple of weeks. If it I was think I'll bring yeah, we, oh my. I used to used to get all these funny questions on on back in the day, and you'd hear people of, of people asking like, "Does the food get you know? Is it complimentary on board?" And people not realizing back when cruising was first becoming a thing. Yeah. So I think I would bring my own food from home if I had to eat the gingerbread that's been out for months. Yeah, because you would you would have no idea where that's been. I don't know. No, you're coughing no. on it, sneezing on it, uh, cause... sneezing on it, touching it. Yuck. Yeah. Yeah. Um, my mum says that she will watch all of your videos three times if you like. Oh, that's right. Yes, please. <laughs> Can everyone do that? <laughs> um, uh, it is three minutes to the end of this live stream. Oh, my goodness. Goodness this gracious. Was, this went so fast and also this feels so early because mm. this is a couple of hours earlier than I normally do it, but we're keeping you awake. What, what time yes. is it? It's tomorrow, for, it's tomorrow for me, so it's all it's good. Tomorrow. <laughs> How is tomorrow? Good? Tomorrow's a good day. Oh, it's, been, it's been wonderful so far. I spent the last <laughs> hour talking about ships. <laughs> no, got to go to sleep. Right. Um, is there anything you would like to say to all these lovely people watching? Of course, I've put your link in the description. Um, oh, I would thank you. Yeah. Guys already, but I mean, it's just nice Might that they've joined us. It's so, it's so nice to have people interested. I appreciate it very much. And look, if you if you are interested in um, the video, it's quite different from Emma's style. Like it's more probably more history linked and cruising, but with usually with a history fact built into it. Mm -hmm. Then I, I would I would welcome a, um, a subscription. But uh, you know, otherwise, just thank you so much for being here. <laughs> what a lovely bunch in here! It's so nice. Yeah, you know. you've got such a nice channel and such a nice community. It's so funny to right. me because I look sometimes at my old live streams. You know, when I started because. Mm. You know, I, th thankfully, I thought, well, I thought, oh, we'll come home for two weeks from work and I'll do live streams for two weeks. That was the original plan. And then here we are very, a lot later. But we started doing cruise trivia and things. A lot of those questions came from you, thankfully. My goodness. Oh, that's good. If you say something, this if is like, what... I'm like, Chris says this, so we're not arguing about the answer. Um, well, I actually wrote the official quiz for a an anniversary cruise for the oh, cruise really? line ones, it was all ship related. So like, you know, got a bit of a credential there, which is nice. But um, this is my third live stream with you now as well. And yeah. each time, yeah, I think so. Each time the um, the, the group, your your channel members and friends and stuff have just been so nice. So yeah, and I, I just see this, you know, I see the same names when I go back and I'm like, oh, that's so nice. Like, oh, Jenny was here and then Jenny's here again. That's amazing. Or, you know, my parents have quite consistently been in these live streams. <laughs> <laughs> beginning. So, uh, thank you, mum and dad, and cruise boys, and other cruise YouTubers who always come in here. It's really nice. Yeah, it's nice. But, it's really yeah, nice everyone, to see everyone. I'm new to Chris, and I look forward to following him. There you go. Oh, thank you. That's so lovely. It's very Chris, kind. 
thanks Chris my dad just thanks you doesn't thank you oh thank you Paul that's very kind <laughs> um but yes thank you so much this has been so much fun it's so it's so nice to catch up with you now, with you now that you can travel again yeah. i'm so yeah happy. i'm so excited to be the one sending you pictures like as well yes. and saying to you hey i'm on i'm on norwegian spirit look what she looks like <laughs> for you chris you go like look at yeah. you go it's so cool yeah it's, it's good thank um, goodness yes. <laughs> Thank you much everyone who's in the chat i'll be back at the normal time next week back to 5 p.m um and thank you all for your questions we really appreciate it and we'll see you. you see you bye thanks so much take care bye